Thank you very much, Robert, for the kind introduction. Really, um, yeah. Um, uh, thanks also to, uh, go to the Humanist Center who uh, uh, supported me a lot throughout the years in research. Um, and thank you for coming despite the, uh, uh, the bad weather. And, uh, um, and also for the linguist, I did give a talk, a similar talk, in at the end of 2016. But the good news is that I made some significant changes. So you don't need to listen to the same talk again. So, and, uh, so uh, I'm, I'm not going to mention what changes I made to, into this talk. But uh, the most important uh, uh, trigger for me to rewrite, re rewrite the paper was I used to think that Chinese has cognitive, uh, cognitive objects, like English, uh, dream a dream, or uh, 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 die a death. But after I talked to some other Chinese linguists, they believe that Chinese doesn't have cognitive objects. So I had to change the whole direction of the research. And this is well, where I am today. OK, so um, the talk is on uh, how to drop your object. Um, yeah. um, so you know languages, people will say people, speakers get, get lazy. You know, they don't say everything they want to say. And one of the important things, for example, is subject drop. Very often, speakers do not say the subject. So for example, in Spanish, in, yeah, I, I, I think it's sway espanola, I'm Spanish. You don't need to say, I am Spanish. You just say, I'm Spanish. People know that it's you. You are Spanish. And uh, 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 also, Hmong, for example, uh, a language um, that uh, our colleague, Martha Radliff, uh, studies, uh, also allows you to drop the subject. So for example, in order to say, I'm Hmong, you can just say, be Hmong. People can tell from the contact that you are Hmong, not another person who is Hmong. So you can so so far you can see two mechanisms uh, to recover a uh, drop the subject, and the condition for language to be able to drop any element is that the listener must be able to recover it. If you drop it and people don't know what you have dropped, it really it'd be a disaster. So people have to know. Uh, I have to know either from the morphology, like Spanish, or Arabic, Russian, uh, Polish, uh, or from the context, like Chinese type, Hmong type, Japanese, Korean. So in order to recover the dropped subject, languages usually rely on rich morphology or rich context. And it's very interesting. Only, I think, Yegli and uh, Safir 1985 have argued that only languages have very rich morphology or very poor morphology uh, allow subject drop. English is somewhere in between. So English doesn't allow subject drop. You have to say the subject most of the time in English. Like French, German, they do not allow subject drop because they have mediocre uh, 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 morphology in terms of complexity. But Spanish, Arabic, Italian can all allow subject drop. And Chinese, on the other hand, Hmong have very poor morphology. You know, if you know, you know people like to quote, uh, mimic how Chinese speakers speak English, say Confucius say, I mean, it's a way of telling you Chinese doesn't have very rich morphology. And therefore, we allow subject drop. OK, so now we know. Um, so for example, English doesn't allow subject drop. But English can do some. So usually, it's very conventionalized. You cannot be too creative uh, in order to recover the drop, the drop the subject. Uh, so for example, you can say, sounds good. We know it, it sounds good. And in English, you can say, don't know. It means you don't know. Or gotcha, mean, I gotcha. You cannot, it, it has to be, you know who that is. Or also in diary writing. You know, got up, went to school, had a good day, came home, had dinner, went to bed. You know, it's I. So you can drop, it's very conventionalized. Uh, English. Uh, so, you know, every usually the most important elements for every sentence, every language, the subject, the verb, the object. And we'll talk something about subject drop. You know, languages can drop the subject if the morphology or the context can help them recover what the drop the subject is. Then how about the object? You know, very few people have studied how object can be dropped. So first, um, Usually, 
verbs do not change according to what the sub uh, object is. Usually, verbs change according to what the subject is. Like, that is actually how a uh, subject is defined uh, in English. In English, the subject is something that determines how the verb should change. Uh, therefore, you say, I study, he studies. So it's a, the agreement. But in English, you know, what, what, what the verb form has nothing to do with what the object is, whether the object third person, first person, singular, plural, whatever, doesn't matter, or definite or indefinite. Uh, very few languages, very few languages, mostly um, Bantu languages, have some morphology in terms of uh, 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 object agreement. So for example, in Swahili, a Bantu language, whether the object is specific or non-specific, can be seen from the verb. So for example, the first sentence, Juma saw the person, which is definite. We can see the MW combination attached to the verb, in front of the verb, C to C. So you know it's definite, it's the person. Without the MW thing, the sentence has to be interpreted as Juma saw a person. So in English, in order to distinguish the uh, 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 differences between definite or indefinite, English uses articles, the person, a person. But in Swahili, they use something on the verb. You can consider that something similar to the English, I study, he studies. In order to know who study, uh, you, you can take a look at the verb. And Swahili can do this for their object. You can take, uh, you, you can see what's happening on the verb to know whether uh, the person is definite or indefinite. Uh, and Chinese, again, Chinese can drop subject very freely. Chinese can drop its object very freely too. So for example, a typical example would be, do you eat meat? You can just say, I eat. It's a very common, or you can just say eat. You can drop the subject too. It's very common for, for you to hear Chinese speakers, uh, when they speak English, you say, do you like hamburger? I like. We're so used to drop the object. And, uh, uh, but also, sometimes there are restrictions. You cannot drop the object. Sometimes, for example, if I ask you, what do you, what do you want to do? In English, you can just say, what do you want to do? You want to say, I want to sing. I want to eat. I want to drink. But in Chinese, you have to say, I want to sing song. You know, I want to sing song. The cha means to sing, ge means song. You have to say, what do you want to do? I want to sing song. Uh, you cannot say, I want to sing. So, you know, this is redundant. Song, of course, when you sing, you sing songs. But you, can, you cannot drop it. It's re although it's redundant, you have to say, I sing song. The same thing, what do you want to eat? What do you want to do? I want to eat food. In Chinese, you have to say that. You cannot just say, I want to eat. What do you want to do? I want to drink water. You have to say, I want to drink water. Or I, you cannot just say, I want to drink. But in English, I think I want to drink has the meaning of you want to drink alcohol. It's not just water. Okay. So it's interesting now. So why Chinese, when Chinese is a language that really allows freely object drop, there are some very weird uh, restrictions. Sometimes you just cannot. You have to say the object, although the object doesn't contribute any new meaning to the verb. Song doesn't help, you know, when you sing, you know it's songs, but you have to say it, okay? Um, so, um, before, uh, so, and also, um, uh, the situation in which, under which um, Chinese cannot drop the object, uh, like sing, like sing, sing song, uh, we'll see they're usually verb object compounds. Chinese has a lot of verb object compounds, really productive. Not like English. And I think, it, uh, I think uh, Pragla, uh, 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 our colleague Pragla has done research and she noted that usually in English, if you have the VO compounds, they have some negative meanings usually. Pickpocket, or uh, pickpocket, killjoy, uh, and some other examples. Not very common. There are some, but Ch in Chinese, it's a very common. We have a lot of verb object compounds. Okay. So the problem, the why in Chinese verb compounds, verb object compounds, you cannot drop the object. You must have the drop object everywhere, although they do not contribute to the meaning uh, too much. Uh, so before we talk about verb object compounds, 
uh, let's take a look. So there are different interpretations why Chinese uh, uh, has so many verb object compounds. Some people say, well, this is under the big trend of Chinese becoming more disyllabic. Chinese, old Chinese used to be very monosyllabic. And ch today's Chinese is becoming very, very disyllabic. So it's, I think it's very interesting. You can tell whether a language is disyllabic or uh, monosyllabic or polysyllabic by looking at people's last names. You know, the Chinese last names are very simple. There's only one syllable. Mine is Liu, I don't have Wu. So you can see this is a very uh, monosyllabic language. Uh, but Chinese, now this becoming very disyllabic. So for example, in old Chinese, the word, word for lion is shi, but today you have to say shi zi. Zi is meaningless, it doesn't have, any, doesn't have anything. It doesn't mean anything, just zi. And fu means father in old Chinese, but today you have to say fu qin. Qin means a relative. Of course your father is your relative, it's redundant. If people say, well, it's just for the sake of making the language more disyllabic. It's a fashion now, you have to be disyllabic. And shi means teacher, but teacher today we have to say lao shi, lao means old. Um, teacher is not necessarily old, but you have to say old teacher. If you young teacher, you have to say a young old teacher. Mm -hmm. so, okay, and to kill is sha in old Chinese, but today you have to say to kill die. You have to kill die someone. Of course, when you kill someone, the person dies. But you have to, some people say you have to add the result of your killing si to die to, so that the language is disyllabic. And du, to read, du shu means to read book, means to read. And this is, again, this is a VO compound, verb object compound. Du means to read, shu means a book. So some people say, well, this is just a phonological driven. It's just Chinese becoming more disyllabic, and therefore you have to do something to make the monosyllabic verb, for example, do disyllabic by adding a meaningless or redundant object. And, or some other people have said that, well, Chinese really because of uh, uh, the idea, the ideal food uh, 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 requirement, every food, uh, must have a strong syllable and weak syllable, and in order to do that, Chinese loves to have a food. In order, in order to do that, you have to make a word disyllabic, so you have a strong syllable, weak syllable. Okay. Um, and also, some other people have said that the real reason for Chinese to become disyllabic is the creation, the birth of the we call this the VV compounds, uh, verb, verb resultative compounds. So uh, and some people have argued that because of the uh, 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 creation of this kind of verb verb compounds, it starts a whole trend of Chinese becoming more disyllabic. You can see it across the board in different parts of speech. And uh, there's a very influential uh, 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 study on Chinese uh, 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 verb object uh, 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 the existence of Chinese very many rich verb object uh, you know, compounds is by Hu 2006, uh, 2006. He argued that there's a process of overt to, uh, co to co from covert to overt objects. So for example, old Chinese she means to wait, but today you have to say she shui, wait water, to wait. And in old Chinese diao means to fish, but in today's Chinese, you have to say diao yu to fish, fish. So um, he said just so the language can be more accurate, there will be less ambiguity. And it's very interesting. You can see this is a verb object compound, shi shui, weigh water, diao yu, diao fish. Uh, usually, the Chinese, of the English, uh, these are like, um, yeah, uh, usually, <laughs> These kind of verbs can be translated into English, uh, single verb, to sing, to eat. So for example, to fish, you know, we know, where, where are you going, what are you going, where, where, where are you going, I'm going, I'm going fishing. You know, you don't need to, I'm going fishing fishes, you know, just a fish. And to, uh, I'm going to wade, but you have to say I'm going to wade Detroit River, for example. You cannot say I'm, I'm going to wade. You have to have an object here. Yeah. My, 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 my hypothesis, which I've never studied, that in English, usually verbs that do not have any manner 
involved can drop the object. When you say eat, it's just to eat. You cannot say I devour. You can devour has some manner in that you have to, you know, uh, greedily doing something. And to sing is just to sing. Um, okay. So, uh, so who just argued that the reason that we have so many verb object compounds in Chinese is because the objects uh, the covert objects now have to be over in order to avoid ambiguity. Um, so let's take a look, a closer look at Chinese VO compounds, the verb object compounds. So first, there's a very close connection between the verb and the object. You cannot be too creative. You have to eat food, you have to do what? And uh, um, uh, you have to wait water, you cannot wait the ocean, for example. We don't have a word for wave ocean. You have to say wave water, okay? And uh, so what is a compound is also a very tricky concept. Really, uh, it's hard to come up with a, comp uh, a definition of what a compound is. Usually, I believe it's more psychological. If you think it's a compound, it's a compound. Like in English, you can say orange juice, OJ. You know, it's a compound. But usually, people do, if you say, I want to have some... Uh, Cucumber juice. You know, people say, "Well, I know what you mean, but it's not quite a compound." So the same thing here. What form? What, what is con considered as a VO compound to some extent, really, by the speaker's psychology, the speaker's it, the familiarity uh, of the speaker. And also another interesting phenomenon uh, regarding Chinese VO compounds is that the object are usually bare uh, must not usually must be bare nouns. What is a bare noun? A bare noun is something that is not modified by anything. Not modified by numbers, not modified by demonstratives, not modified by adjectives. And uh, uh, they can only have a non-specific uh, interpretation. Non-specific, what is specific, what is not specific Specific is something that both the speaker and the listener know what that is. So the book is very interesting. You know the book, what is the book? where the murderer escaped. We know that uh, 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 the murderer, we do know ident the identity of the murderer, but we know there's a murderer who committed the crime. So that's specific. Non-specific are usually indefinite. Uh, a book, uh, I want to read a book. It doesn't matter which book, a book. Uh, the non indefinite, indefinite non-specific. And also, in, uh, also non-specific, non Nouns can also be generic. What is generic? Generic refers to a whole kind, a whole group. So for example, in English, uh, you can say a cat meals. I'm just telling you some of uh, the characteristics of the mammal, the mammal, yeah, cat, cat meal, the habit. And the bird is a warm-blooded animal. You can say a cat, you can use indefinite, or the bird, you can use definite. The, the bird is a warm-blooded animal. So we're talking about the whole species of birds. Dinosaurs are extinct. So the generic, I'm not talking about any specific dinosaur, but a dinosaur as a group. Or mammoth roam Siberia uh, millions of years ago. So these are generic, so I, you can have a feel what, gen, what I mean by generic. And also here are some exam, uh, so more examples of, uh, the, 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 so we have specific, we have non-specific. Now within non-specific, we have indefinite and generic. So indefinite in English, I want to buy a book that's indefinite. I want to buy books, generic. I just want to buy the thing that is called book. I want to buy things that are called books. So, so, so here are the characteristics again of Chinese VO compounds. There's a close connection between the verb and the object. The object tends to be, must be bare nouns. No number, no demonstrative, no adjective, nothing. It has only have generic interpretation. So for example here, in Chinese you say, I want to buy book. I want to buy book. This again, this is the VO compound. VO compound. And the book, the object, O, is generic. I want to buy all kinds of books. I just want to buy books. Doesn't matter which one. Um, but this is indefinite. I want to buy a book. It's not a VO compound. VO compounds do not allow any modification on the bare noun. So you notice that I want to buy a book, it's not VO compounds anymore. I want to buy the book, it's not a VO compound anymore because there's a definite article, a definite demonstrative this here. So VO compounds again in Chinese 
can only allow generic object. Okay. Um, so also English has a lot of uh, verb object phrases. In English you can say have dinner. Let's have dinner now. Or I want to change the world. Or if someone keeps eating his or her words. And uh, this took place in 2017. And let's take a walk. So you know, these are very commonly used phrases in English. If you study English, uh, you definitely will memorize a lot of such combinations. But you can see, compared with the Chinese, VO compounds, they have very more freer uh, structure. So dinner is a bare noun, no modification at all. The world, definite. One's words, definite. Place, bare noun. A walk, indefinite. So I want to uh, 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 emphasize the differences between Chinese verb object compounds and the English verb object phrases. Okay? Uh, so, uh, uh, so again, we, uh, let's revisit the example I sing song in Chinese. You cannot just say I sing. Uh, you cannot say I sing. Uh, this sentence is correct only if it's said in a context, if it asks you, do you want to sing this song? You can say, I sing. That's fine. We know the dropped object refers to the song the speaker, uh, the, 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 uh, the person who asks uh, refers to. Or it, can only, or it can mean, I sing it, I sing those sounds. So it's very easy to say. Uh, it's not too difficult for us to generalize that in Chinese, only objects that carry all the information can be omitted. For example, a generic object like a song, go up in a VO compound in a yes no question. Uh, do you sing? I, do you sing? Do you sing songs? I sing. Because people know you are sing, you sing songs and the, because the object has been given away uh, in the question per se. Uh, or, uh, 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 other situations, indefinite, definite, or per pronoun that have been introduced in the context. For example, in Chinese, if you say, I look for a book, I look for a book, I look for, I look for this book, I look for my physics book, but didn't find. So you can drop the English, you have to say, I didn't find it, I didn't find them. Uh, you must have the object. But in Chinese, you can drop the object because the object has been introduced in the first part of the clause. You know what that refers to. Uh, uh, so, but if there's no way for me to figure out what the object is, you have to uh, arbitrarily insert a redundant generic object to have a compound, VO compound. So for example, to insert a song after a sing. You have to insert food after eat. You have to insert water after wait. So this just so now you can see the contrast. If you have a, a object, the speakers know uh, specifically what that is. You can drop it. A uh, uh, listener. If the listener doesn't know uh, what the object is, you have to insert. Even if it doesn't matter what the object is, you have to insert a generic, meaningless, redundant object. English. In English, usually, English is very conservative when it comes to subject omission. omission. Even if it's very clear from the context, so context doesn't help you. So for example, do you listen to music? You have to say, I do, I listen to music. You cannot say, I listen to. You know, you have, you know, you know I'm talking about music, I'm not talking about short stories or audiobook. You have to say, do you listen to music? I listen to music. Yeah, or I do. And some convention, again, like the con uh, situation for English subject drop, sometimes in conventionalized uh, 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 context, you can drop the subject, uh, object. So for the rest of your writing, you can say add sauce and stir. You don't need to stir what? Uh, this is a grammatical sentence, right? Add, recipe, uh, add sauce and stir. I got it from Alan Barton. So I have to okay. And you know, sometimes people have been joking and say, I like. You like? I like. You know, or like the Facebook, you know, nowadays you will see the thumb, like, you know, some grammatical, like what? Okay, and uh, also 
So in English, some, there are some limited con conventions during, uh, uh, for which, uh, 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 in which you can drop the object. And also English, interestingly, can also drop generic objects. What do you do when you're nervous? You can say, I eat. You don't need to say, I eat things, I eat stuff, or I eat food. You know, I eat food sounds a little bit foreign too, right? I eat food, it sounds a little bit foreign. Okay, so if, it's, if the object is generic, you can just drop it. But there's restrictions too. Only verbs of creation, for example, to sing, to cook, to write, uh, uh, can allow generic object drop. And very interestingly, these verbs, when they are translated into Chinese, to sing, to cook, to write, they are translated into Chinese usually as verb object compounds. Okay? And also, uh, uh, so verbs that do not have loaded manner allow uh, uh, object drop. So you cannot say, I devour. What do you, when you're nervous, what do you do? I devour. You cannot say that. Because devour has manner involved in it. Or murder, you know, uh, what does he do? Uh, he murders. <laughs> you have to murder, you can stealthily kill. You know, it's, it has a very... Uh, a, a special manner involved a skin. Um, I read. I love. I love reading. It's okay, but I love skimming. You, know, you have to. I love skimming books, or chase. You know, I. Uh, you cannot say I chase. Okay, so it's very, very simple, very clear. It's not too difficult uh, 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 to discover. So here's the list of. When, uh, when Chinese uh, uh, can drop the subjects and the objects, and even I mean, English can do that. So for example, uh, um, Uh, so, for example, in Chinese, you can drop the subject when the subject can be recovered from the context. Context is very important, and people have noted. Uh, thank you. And people have noted, People have argued that Chinese is a more context-based language. So people re, uh, uh, get a lot of information from the context. On the other hand, English is more grammar-oriented based language. So everything is in the grammar. And there's some limited convention allowed in terms of dropping the subject. And also in Chinese, how to recover a drop o uh, omitted object in Chinese? Again, you rely on the context. You know that uh, I sing songs or I eat food, so you don't need to repeat it. And in English, again, it's on grammar, based on grammar. Uh, only generic nouns uh, uh, can allow object drop, and only top some limited register in a recipe writing or in a joking, uh, 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 playful way. And uh, so uh, uh, what about the condition uh, Condition for object con con uh, omission? It must be specific. In Chinese, you can only drop specific uh, objects that gives you all the information. And in English, you can drop generic objects. It doesn't, it cannot be specific, it has to be non-specific. I eat, I drink. Okay. When uh, when objects cannot be under what situation cannot subjects be dropped in Chinese? If it's generic object, you cannot drop it. You have to insert uh, a generic object, uh, as in a VO compound. And in Chinese, in English, the drop subject, a uh, drop subject, has to cannot be generic. Cannot be generic. You have to, uh, yeah. It has to be non-generic. Yeah, to be specific, okay? So, the comparison between Chinese and the English subject and object missions, Chinese relies on the context a lot. If there's no context, uh, you have to insert a generic object. <coughs> English, on the other hand, relies on grammar a lot. But the context does, and the context doesn't matter. Whether even if uh, the object has already been suggested, been mentioned, uh, in the context, you still have to uh, repeat it. And only, English can only omit generic objects regardless of the context. So you can see the English allows generic objects to be dropped, context doesn't matter. 
Chinese relies on context, and when there is no context, you have to insert a generic object, a contrast between the two languages. So, uh, and I also argue that each language can only choose one method to omit the object, depending on the referentiality of the noun. Referentiality of the noun means whether the noun is specific, non-specific, definite, indefinite, or generic. Um, so it's a very simple, it's a, uh, I mean, uh, uh, it's, it's not too complicated. It just, uh, 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 <coughs> because I think when people, uh, when linguists study the referential, referentiality of nouns, I think very, uh, very rarely do we connect this to object drop. So I'm just trying to make connection when object drop, when, what determines object drop. Uh, and uh, so the whole, uh, the whole idea for this research comes from uh, 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 my colleague, uh, Liliana uh, Proklak. You know, she talks about the Serbian se, an article, a particle. And she argued that, you know, the se has to be there. You just, don't, although it, it's meaningless, where it's too ambiguous, you have to have it there. And that made me think about the very not re annoying Chinese VO compounds, the object. The reason that if you study Chinese as a second language learner, they're difficult. People keep forgetting them, where they, they, don't, they are not used to it, especially English speakers. They tend to say, I eat, instead of saying, instead of saying I eat food. So let's take a look at the se. So in, in Serbian, for example, we have what children say hit. It has many meanings. Can you learn mean the children are hitting one another, which reflects a uh, 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 reciprocal interpretation, where one is the children, the say refer, refers to one, the uh, a generic subject, or the children are hating someone else, is someone else, is indefinite, non-specific. Okay, so what I want to argue that, uh, I got the idea for this paper from Progwax, uh, 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 a discussion on set, and, uh, but the, there's some differences, so first, the idea of a se, the idea of non uh, 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 a redundant object doesn't help me too much to understand why Chinese is becoming disyllabic and why Chinese has so many VO compounds. It's very descriptive. Uh, I still not do not know the connection between Chinese, why Chinese is becoming disyllabic. And by the way, very, very few languages in the world are disyllabic. The only thing I can think of is Malay. I think Austronesian, some of Austronesian language, Malay, most of the words, most of the vocabulary of words in lexicon are disyllabic. I think languages usually are either monosyllabic or polysyllabic. <coughs> only a small handful of languages are disyllabic. Okay. Uh, but what I can, uh, what the idea I can borrow from uh, 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 Progress research is that and she argued that the se, the existence of se, really represents a fossilized previous date in terms of language evolution. In the very beginning, uh, their verbs uh, can only have a one argument. The argument can either be the subject or the object, never specify. But the se, the purpose of se, just to tell you there's another something, either a subject or object involved. And over time, um, uh, it's fossilized, and then uh, it helps give birth to the distinction between the subject and the object. It's very important for languages to distinguish the subject and the object. Uh, what I argue is that, so after, re after separating the subject and the object of, uh, 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 around the verb, Languages then decide to, you know, like we said, language speakers are lazy. They don't want to say everything all the time. So they uh, decide to omit things. But you cannot just omit things as you want. You know, you have to be smart in order to be lazy. So, so what, can be, what can be dropped really depends on the referentiality. Whether generic, some languages can only drop generic objects like English. And some languages can only drop non-generic, uh, non-generic, uh, non-specific objects like Chinese. So uh, what I uh, what I uh, want to uh, argue is that uh, the object drop really is a phenomenon 
uh, related to eventually related to uh, the referentiality uh, of the object. Because and the, the reason why I have to talk about this is because subject drop relies on the morphology and on the context. But when it comes to object, usually there's a very little morphology that can help you to recover the object. Then how can we drop this object? Then I argue that then you have to take a look at the feature, at the characteristics of the object in terms of referentiality, definite, indefinite, specific, not specific, or generic. Okay. Thank you very much. have some freedom. So for example, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, that's why I think I used to think that they were cognate, cognate objects because I only focus on the, uh, uh, the restriction instead of thinking more about freedom. But for example, I really think, I have to think more about this, it really depends on the nature of the verb too. If you say fish, you can only have fish. A fish fish means to go fishing. To fish, fish. Uh, but we have some expressions. You can say, I, f I fish a golden turtle. That's, it means you got lucky, uh, you got a very rich husband. <laughs> you got a tur golden turtle. But it's not a real compound anymore. You cannot omit it. Right, right. Yeah, so, but. Mm -hmm. so, so you can say something like fish shark or something. Or oh, you can say fish. But do you need to, to say fish, fish, and then shark? No, you then say fish, shark. You fish say shark. fish, shark, fish. Mm -hmm. Fish, shark, fish. OK, so mm -hmm. there is never like doubling of the object. No, you can never no, no, you cannot say fish, fish, shark. Right, so, no, so it's only one. And typically, only one. yeah. So, uh, okay. yeah. Or if you don't want to sing the song, but say you want to sing an anthem or something. Yeah, uh, it's true. Uh, you can say sing national song, sing national song, which means to sing the anthem. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Is that still a compound? It's still, uh, I was thinking the compound. We have a little uh, a diagnostic tool uh, to test what is a compound or not. In Chinese, in order to describe how well someone does something, you have to repeat the verb. You have to say, I sing song, sing very well. In order to say, I sing very well, you have to say, I sing song, sing very well. So the sing song, it's a, so it's a, it's a sign that sing song is a, is a compound. I think sing, sing national anthem, na, national anthem, you can say, I sing national anthem, sing very well. That's fine. But still, I think national anthem here is generic all kinds. It doesn't mean, you know, people can understand. If you say, let's sing the national anthem, I think people understand that it's Chinese national anthem yeah. or in a context. Yeah, uh, it's true. I have to think more about the paradigm of what kind of verbs can have, can have, can, can, can form a real compound. It's, it's true. It's a little challenging. You got the too productive in Chinese. It's a, have to categorize them. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. you know, <coughs> if you were going to say, I fish for shark, wouldn't you have to change the, uh, it's diao yu for just fish, right? Mm -hmm. So if you were going to say, I fish for shark, wouldn't you have to say, I troll for shark? Wouldn't you have to change With the? Diao. Uh, sha yu is, is shark. You say, what diao sha yu, I fish shark fish. Shag, S-H-A. 
But does does Chinese have the word troll? Troll? Like a fish? What, no. What is tro it's like a, a form, it's a way of fishing. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's a fairly specific, T-R-O-L-L. -L. Okay. I use yeah. a net. Oh. Or use a long line with a long line. Like with lots of hooks. Or I said, a spear. Like large scale, not yeah. only for specific fish, but for a whole school of fish. You can do troll. Or a spear, like if you use a, there's one uh, oh. race that use, used to, they probably not anymore, used to uh, spear the fish. Oh. In Chinese, just fish, oh. fish, fish. That we don't have. Again, if you, say, I think if you say troll, if you whatever, you have manner involved already, right? You got the specific technology, yeah. technique yeah. of fish. It's not just fishing in general. You can say I fish for shark. You can't say that, right? You can say I troll sharks or I fish shark. Both are okay, right? Again. But I mean, how would you? Would you would still say diao. You have to diao. We only have diao. We don't have uh, yeah. Oh. Or you can say I use a net to fish a shark. I use a net, you have an instrument. I use a net to fish sharks. What, would you, what did you say about manner? I didn't understand about manner. Manner is when you troll, it's really, there's very specific method, right? But when you say fish, a fish, people do know what the manner is. It's less specific, right? So, so, when, so if, you're, if it's gonna be manner, you, you don't have a BO, or you do have a BO? It's so a good a question. I, mostly, I talk about the manner used in English, oh, but for oh. Chinese, I have to think about it. Yeah, oh. yeah. I think in Chinese, usually no. I think usually no. It's more general. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, uh, Margaret. Um, one comment, and then something. A couple of comments. Mm -hmm. um, first, you talk about the fact that for object drop, you need to know the referentiality of it. Um, both Yiddish and Old French. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned. This have before. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's context. Context. Yeah. Old French, okay, and Yiddish. Yiddish. Um, okay. Yiddish. You can say, um, "Did you buy bread?" Yes, I bought. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So and Old mm -hmm. French. Old French is similar to the Yiddish, and then mm -hmm. you can drop an object if there's a context. Not modern French. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But did did old French, for example, allow subject drop too? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. To a much greater extent, it had much more morphology than uh -huh, modern uh -huh, French uh -huh. does. Okay. Okay. Or old okay. French. Mm -hmm. um, the other one is I'm bothered by your talking about the English generics. Mm. I would argue, and it won't surprise you, that the diff that there is a difference in meaning of the verb between I like to cook fish mm. and what do you like to do while well, I cook. Uh, okay. I, don't, I don't think it's, I think that there are two different meanings uh, of the verb to cook. Uh -huh. And the, the generic part of it is built into the verb. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm feeling my way here. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I haven't thought about Saturated, it. Yeah, the argument is part of the verb. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and that you, I'm really not comfortable mm -hmm. with the idea that that's an object drop, mm -hmm. that there ever was an object. Uh -huh. um, for yeah. cook, mm -hmm. for sing, for write, the create, the ones you call creative. Yeah, yeah. Is that I, like, like it's like a hobby? I like cook is a hobby versus like Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What, do you, what do you do for fun? I cook. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I sing. I, I write. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm uh -huh. not convinced that... But the, I know what you mean. Yeah, you'd have... I think you need to find... Mm -hmm. Good arguments for there mm -hmm. being an omitted subject mm -hmm. object mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if if a person is Chinese, native Chinese speaker, and they want to say like uh, they, they want to say I cook as a hobby, then uh, mm -hmm. wouldn't they have to say my hobby is cooking? You have to say my hobby is cook food. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You cannot say, "I have." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so fun means make food. But of course, you have for in this case, you cannot just say "so." It's very general. Basically, literally means "I make." You have to specify you make what. Yeah. But if I ask you, "Do you cook?" You can say, "I make." You can. Yeah. You so fun, ma? So. Oh. That's fine. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Steve first. 
how do, and you know, my knowledge of Chinese is negligible, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. thinking about English, uh -huh. uh, how do indirect objects fit into this? Mm. Indirect the, objects. The, the reason yeah. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm puzzling over this is actually just a couple of weeks ago in class I was talking about, you know, things that we don't, things that we know, teaching students, things we know even without knowing them about verbs and knowing that a verb like give has mm -hmm. three arguments, yeah. subject, mm -hmm. uh, you know, subject, direct object, indirect object. And to do that, I just said, OK, just give me a sentence that uses give. Mm -hmm. And uh, very annoyingly, as students always do, um, the, the student gave me an exam a, a counterexample, uh -huh. which was, I give blood. I give blood. OK. <laughs> and so, um, which, yeah. which, which violates okay, the okay. norm yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. but it's an example of an indirect yeah, yeah, object yeah, yeah, drop, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's, uh -huh, uh -huh. but it's this, a very okay. idiomatic, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. context. Mm -hmm. How so, does that relate yeah. okay. to the argument that you're raising mm -hmm. here? Most examples you were giving were really mm -hmm. sort of direct objects yeah, yeah, being yeah, yeah, dropped. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it's interesting. I have to think about this. Uh, I think the first thing is that I talk about VO compounds. I think that yeah. get rid of the indirect object already. In order to have a VO yeah. compounds, you must have a direct object. And second, I think the meaning of give really is causative. Give really means to cause someone to have, to cause possession, to cause someone to have the book. I make someone to have, uh, make someone have the book. But give blood. <coughs> I think the give is now cause someone. Hmm? I give blood. I don't know, I right? Blood. And this, we, yeah. we have this I give you blood. Yeah. yeah. I'm giving blood to the blood bank. Yeah, yeah. They're going to keep my blood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they will have it. Anyway. Give, can we say yeah. give sacrifice? Give no. sacrifice? No. Make, no. Make you, sacrifice. you can make a sacrifice. Make a sacrifice. Make a sacrifice. Okay. okay. Uh, I'll think about it. Yeah. But in Chinese, give blood is contribute. Contribute blood. We have, you cannot say give. Right. Oh, you okay. can't say offer sacrifices. Offer yeah. sacrifices. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. yeah, I would think about give. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Any compounds with give? Uh, I, you can you can say give money. My parents gave money, gave a lot. You know, okay. gave gave what you know, gave okay. more so money. You can just forget about the, the indirect objects. It's just you do that. Yeah, and you say my mom gave. It depends on count. If you say my parents gave money, right? Usually means give me. Yeah, I think we're home case, yeah. And, of course. <laughs> and in English, if you can say, I already gave. I already gave. Oh, oh yeah. I already gave. That, yeah. that means I contribute. It's a contribution. Yeah, yeah, a contribution yeah. Like yeah. to the self, uh, Salvation Army, right? Yeah. Because I already gave. Or yeah. to Wayne State. To Wayne State. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get a call in. Yeah. <laughs> I gave five. I feel yeah, lucky if I've learned yeah, this right. phrase at this outside the store because I already gave. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, um, there's another class of English verbs that allow you to omit specific objects. There was an article many, many, many years ago in the generative semantics days mm -hmm. where somebody, I think it was John Lawler, who used to be at Wayne at Michigan, Michigan uh -huh. rounded up these examples. Uh, examples involving medicine and drugs. Uh -huh. So you can say shake well before using. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, uh -huh. And then, as you said, sorry? Like it's like and recipes. like recipes, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can you can say drop into boiling water, you know, to uh -huh, drop drop by drop by spoonfuls into boiling water. You've omitted the object. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And there is uh, an the article in the uh -huh. um, small clause book yeah, yeah. about this. Yeah. That Kate wrote. Uh -huh. All right. Oh, yeah. Usually they're edible things, right? You or or you well, yeah. I mean, things. drugs are edible too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or mm -hmm. metaphorically speaking, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm trying to jump out of my class. <laughs> can you say, um, if somebody says, Ni uh -huh. can, you, can, you, can the answer just be chunk? Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Do you I sing know. songs? Sing. Oh. That, that's why I said if, on Facebook, it's a like. Like. You tell me the subject and the object. Uh, Natasha? So I was really intrigued uh, 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 towards the end of your talk when you tried to connect evolution and Lulian's mm -hmm. ideas with uh, this phenomenon. And I was thinking in, in terms of acquisition patterns. And um, so it's known that children who acquire non parental languages like English mm -hmm. move freely on these subjects, but they rarely on the objects. 
they omit the update. They, they don't. Well, uh, mostly they don't. It's, uh, there is this uh, contrast uh, uh, between uh, uh, null subjects and null objects. Uh, uh, children, and uh, now I'm working on acquisition of Arabic, and I'm looking at the patterns in Arabic, and so this is a prodrop language, and it actually has both subject and object agreement uh -huh. uh, if so you can drop all the information subjects or objects mm -hmm. if you can recover it from context mm -hmm. and also and so the verb is inflected mm -hmm. and what's interesting is that children omit subjects they correctly use null subjects mm -hmm. but they do not use null objects a lot so mm -hmm. they prefer to build oh, to overt, overt objects uh -huh. so i'm just wondering um if this if you can think so in, in, instead of evolution, thinking about development, these kind of different mm -hmm. stages, so why is it mm -hmm. that they um, like to have objects? They like to, you know, like uh -huh. to drop objects until uh, at the possibly later stage when they just realize something about referentiality, how that works, and uh -huh. can be omitted. Okay. And then you know, yeah. they okay. start omitting objects if uh -huh. the grammar omits it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a very interesting point. Uh, first that I can think of, you know, in syntax, people talk about external argument, internal argument, so object, always internal argument. If you draw a tree, it's, it's more, uh, more closely bounded with the verb. And also, I think uh, structural, I think it's easier to learn structure than learning referentiality. What is definite, what is in-depth, I think it's harder to learn. So I think maybe, I don't, I don't know. So, so people probably, Arabic speakers, the children, do not dare to drop the subject. They haven't learned the referentiality. You know what is what is there, what is not there. I think it's more semantic, more pragmatic than pure syntax: the subject versus object. Well, I think there is pragmatics in, involved in mm -hmm. both, and there is grammar involved in both because you mm -hmm. have to show it on the verb, mm -hmm. and otherwise you cannot omit it. Right? Mm -hmm. You have to build. It's like uh, does anybody speak Arabic here? Because <laughs> I'm not mm -hmm. an Arabic speaker. Um, it's like a clinic that you have to add, and then you can mm -hmm. drop the object. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that my people? Yeah, but they think choose people. not to do that. They do that with subjects, but less yeah, so yeah, yeah. with objects. So the imbalance between the yeah. asymmetry between asymmetry. subject and object. And yeah. And also, I would, also in Chinese, when you can drop the object, and some, it's not that easy. Some you cannot, uh, you cannot. For example, you cannot drop the subject without. You cannot. Let me see. You cannot drop the subject when returning the re, when returning retaining the object. Do you eat food? You cannot say you can say I eat. That's fine. But you cannot say eat food. Do you eat food? Eat food. No, you cannot. You eat food? Eat food. It's a little weird. Do you eat food? What well, do you eat food? What eat? Eat food? It's a little bit. It's yeah. Yeah, so. There's some. It's more like, do you want rice? Do you want rice? Yeah. What sure? Do what? Yeah. You want me fun? Ma? You want me fun? It's a little bit redundant. If you say what? Well, yeah. Do you want rice? I want. That's fine. Do you want rice? Want rice? It sounds a little bit awkward, right? Do you want rice? Oh, want rice? <laughs> <laughs> There's, uh, yeah, thank you. I think I should do more about asymmetry between subject and object. You know, so, uh huh. There are two notions which I keep waiting to hear uh, as part of this conversation. One is uh, the notion of, um, of prosodic, because in, in English, you mean, the national anthem is not a compound. The national anthem is not a compound. Um, Compounds are different from uh -huh. from other combinations mm -hmm. but in mm -hmm. terms of like the, the White House. The, is, is what? A, the White House oh, is, the is, White is House. a yeah, yeah. In fact, you can say the White House. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, you yeah, that. So, so in other words, I'm wondering if if the question of tones, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know, uh, will come into this conversation yeah, yeah. in terms of identifying the, mm -hmm. the, the sort of uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 the verb object compounds. Mm -hmm. so from the, the structure. And, and the, the other one that, that, that I kept waiting for you to 
mentioned, I don't know, in, in English they are transitive and intransitive mm -hmm. and ditransitive mm -hmm. verbs. Mm -hmm. Which, which uh, in intransitive verbs you, you require an object, but there mm -hmm. are some, some verbs which are ditransitive. You, mm -hmm. you, you could have a uh, food. Right. Uh -huh. But I, the no, notion of transitivity didn't actually uh, come up in, your, in, in, in this talk. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they might be relevant. It is but, relevant. But, but it's true. I didn't talk too much about transitivity. Transitivity yeah. matters here. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So that's. I think that also relates to Margaret's question. So when you say, "What do you yeah. do?" I cook. Uh -huh. So I think you consider this intransitive. It would be an intransitive. Not yeah. as an exactly. object yeah. drop. Just intransitive verb, mm -hmm. which is cook. Uh, or intransitive meaning of the same whatever the same, the same yeah, meaning. yeah 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 so yeah. yeah what is the action the action yeah uh, and also uh, sure uh, again I really need to look at more I, I know uh, there's a book that characterizes Chinese bio compounds into 25 groups and I really I don't know I still cannot remember what the different groups so I think it's helpful for me to look at to categorize to study uh, the bio compounds from a transitivity more closely. Maybe, maybe it might give some answer too. I also speaking for solid information. In bio compounds, usually is the object that attracts stress in Chinese. So it's not the head. It's the non-head stress. It's on the object. Usually. So in Trifan, it's the fun. Fine. Yeah, fun is stress. Trifan, Trifan, more stressed. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know much about linguistics, but my question is, at the beginning you talked about old Chinese, new Chinese language. Mm -hmm. Is that like, is new generation changing the language, or is it just changing over time? Uh, the, you mean yeah. the comparative? <laughs> oh, we have a historical Great question. Language, I think Margaret answered That's everything. one of the endless questions about language. Um, and it makes it hard to declare that the language has really changed. You have to wait and see. If it's teenagers who are using this and when they stop being teenagers, they stop. Or if they carry it along with them until they're 80 and it's the same thing. Clearly, is it slang or is it really a modified language? So I'm like, these, yeah, these are true sense. modifications. Okay. But um, you How look at time? a slang, you know, there are slang words that you would use that I don't even know. Yeah. And you may drop them when you hit when you finish undergraduate school or yeah, that's whatever. That's what I was asking, because like, he said older people probably don't you use that extra... No, it's way older than that. Yeah. Like, what Old is that Chinese, mean? I think, be, uh, way to, yeah. a thousand years BC, okay. way, yeah. way back. Not my grandparents, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No is but that's a wonderful Is question. it a head language? Come so and take historical old Chinese? linguistics. No, the old Chinese. Old, we don't speak. Uh, old, we don't speak any. Uh, it's like old English. You don't yeah, talk like that. Any, they're dead languages. Yeah. 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 Uh, I was interested in speaking of vocabulary. We were talking about disertification in Chinese. So I gave students the example of reduplication in English, bling bling, and all this. And only a uh, one uh, Caroline Morgan, a physics professor, doesn't know the word bling bling. <laughs> she doesn't know the word bling bling. <laughs> Just a little point. I like. I, I look at everything through the acquisition lens. Mm -hmm. So this disillusification of change reminds me that children. Uh, it seems to be a universal tendency. Mm -hmm. Very young children have this template. They prefer disillusioned yeah, food. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's it? and a monosyllable that's weak is dispreferred. I think universally. Uh, so there must be some kind of a natural. Yeah. More it's kind of psychological yeah, tendency yeah. To, towards delay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, I'll yeah, think more about that. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if this is like the right way to ask a question, but like, you know how like in English you say, do you cook food? And you say, I do, but in Chinese you say, uh, ni, ni, yeah, yeah, we don't have the. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So yeah, yeah. like you don't have the do verbs, yeah, and you, you repeat don't. the same uh -huh. verbs. Yeah, why you can say, I sing or I eat or mm -hmm. whatever, as yeah. in like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's true. In English, the use of auxiliary verb, uh, uh, it's more, we, we have less tense, we have less verbal morphology. I think we don't have, the, we don't need auxiliary verb that we do. It does, 
do shoot. Yeah, we don't we not we don't use it that much. Oh, so if somebody somebody asks you the chunk, the ma, uh -huh. you're saying is it wrong to say chunk? You chunk derma. Still a little bit affected. Oh. Yeah. Right. You chunk derma, chunk der. I prefer to say what chunk. I think or think. Yeah. Sounds a little bit affected. Mm -hmm. Somebody said somebody. I don't know what this means. So I was wondering if you could tell us, mm -hmm. what is a pro-drop language? Oh, well, sorry, what is a pro-drop pro language? It's just a language that allows the subject to be dropped. Oh. Mm -hmm. Pro is short for pronoun. Pronoun. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Professionally dropping. <laughs> Professionally dropping. <laughs> <laughs> pronoun. <laughs> so.